Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode in our series through the book of James. Today's video is going to be short because we're only dealing with one verse. That's right. Only one verse that we're going through for today's whole video. And the reason for that is because the verse we're going through today is kind of the first part of a three-part epilogue, right? A three-part conclusion to the letter of James. If you remember last week's episode, we talked about patience, and that was actually the topic of the very first subject that we talked about way back in March when this whole thing kicked off. And so James is kind of tying together all of these themes, tying together being patient during trouble, but he's also talking about the way that we speak and the way that we act. He's talking about pride versus humility. But before he says goodbye, before he finishes his letter to all the churches that he's writing to, he wants to remind them of a few quick things. And the first one is found in James 5 verse 12. So we'll read that now. He writes, But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Right? So, so his thing is, what he wants to say is, don't be swearing by all these things. Right? And so that might seem like a strange thing to say maybe in our culture, but we have to remember is that in that time, what would often happen is people would swear by various things. They'd swear by the hair on their head. They'd swear by, you know, the, the life of their son. They'd swear by the temple or whatever else was important in their life to try and add weight to what it was they were saying. And so this verse, it actually is very similar to a verse that Jesus speaks in his most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. And that's found in uh, Matthew chapter 5. And so I'll just read a few verses here of what he's saying. He says, Again, you have heard that it was said of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is the, his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Now, what both James and Jesus are getting at is this whole idea of people adding weight to what they're saying by swearing on something and oftentimes swearing on things that don't even belong to them or swearing by things that are completely out of their control. Now, there are examples of people making vows and oaths in the Bible. I mean, for example, in the Old Testament, there's a prophet Elijah right? And he is dealing with this evil king. And he says, you know, as the Lord lives, you know, there will be no rain, right? So he's kind of saying, as sure as it is that God is real, this thing is going to happen because of what you are doing. And in the New Testament, we see examples, right? Paul, in some of his letters, will write, God is my witness. This thing is true. Right? So he will, he will kind of, in a sense, swear by God, but it's not exactly what's being talked about here. Now, there are examples of people taking oaths that are not so good. One of the ones that comes to my mind is, is Peter. Right? And so when Jesus is brought before Pilate and he's condemned to death, and then Peter is kind of hanging out outside of everything that's going on. And Jesus is being beaten and about to be crucified. There's a, a little girl that recognizes him and says, Hey, you're one of Jesus' disciples, aren't you? 
And he starts making all of these oaths and swearing by all these things, saying that he doesn't know who Jesus is, which was, of course, a lie, which was, of course, you know, a result of his fear and his anxiety over being associated with who Jesus was. And that was obviously a bad thing. So we can see that these oaths in certain contexts can be okay, but not in others. So, so let's think of this. Let's think of our, our modern day situation, right? If you're in a court of law and you're going to be a witness, right? Oftentimes, you know, you'll put your hand on the Bible or, or, you know, whatever, they've changed it now to some degree, depending on what you believe. But you say, you know, I swear to say the whole or the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. And when you get married, as I've been married, you make certain vows before God and before the people there that you're going to do certain things, that you're going to love your spouse, that you're going to take care of them, that you're going to stick by them in sickness and in health. So is is saying that, is committing that, whether you're in the courtroom or whether you're getting married, is that a bad thing? Well, that's an interesting question, right? And there, there are certain groups of Christians that refuse to make any kind of vows, any kind of oaths, any kind of promises because of what we read here, both from James and from Jesus himself. And the reality is, is that You know, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where people are often so dishonest, whether it's in business or in relationships or in all sorts of different areas of life, people often lie. They don't tell the truth. And sometimes it's difficult to hold people accountable for the things that they've said. So in our world, in our society and culture, we kind of force people to make certain vows, to swear by certain things to promise that they're going to keep their word. And I mean, this isn't something as big necessarily as a marriage or a court of law, but I mean, you know, when you, when you buy a house, you have to write a contract, right? When, when you, when you get an insurance policy for your car, you have to sign certain documents saying that, you know, you will pay a certain amount for a certain type of coverage. And I don't think that's what James and Jesus are talking about. I don't think that that they're saying you can't promise to do something. But what they're saying is don't bind yourself to things that are out of your control, right? Like don't, don't add extra burdens or extra weight to the things that you're saying simply to try and prove a point or try to convince people of something, right? Like it's, it's not, it's not a wise practice to say, oh, well, I swear to God that I'm going to do this or that. Particularly when we've already read in the book of James, we don't know what the future is going to hold. It could very well be that that situation might be out of our control. So what is James getting at? And what is, what is Jesus getting at? I think it's this. It's. They want us to speak in a way that people will trust our words, that people will trust the things that we're, we're saying, right? We, we don't have to add all these extra bells and whistles to the things that we're saying. Just let your yes be a yes and let your no be a no. Now, why is that so important? Well, again, we live in a world where so many people are so dishonest, right? I mean, there, there are so many situations, whether it's business people or politicians or even people who are close to us who've, who've lied and lied in ways that are very costly, that, that often hurt people very deeply. And so what we're called to do here is to just be purely honest. And that matters. Why does it matter? Well, because when we speak things about everyday situations, right? We say we're going to be somewhere or we say we're going to do something or we say no to something or whatever that situation might be. 
If we want people to trust us about the things that we're saying when it comes to spiritual things, things about who God is and who Jesus is and his, his love for us and his plan for us and the gospel, well, we ought to also be trustworthy in the little things. Right? And, and we, all, we, ought to, we ought to, you know, always be truthful so that people will trust what we say, especially when, when we get the opportunity to share these vitally important things with them. So our yes should always be a yes and our no should always be a no because otherwise people might call into question our own honesty, our own trustworthiness. And so my encouragement to you guys is this reminder, just as James was reminding the church, he said, look, you don't have to add all these extra things, right? You don't have to, you don't have to say, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't pinky swear, right? I mean, that's a silly thing to say, but, but I, I didn't, you know, I didn't sign on the dotted line or I didn't, you know, do or say this thing, but that our word is good, that our word is true. We're representatives of Jesus, representatives of God here on earth. And we want to let people know that the God that we worship, that the Savior that we have in Jesus is a trustworthy person and we're his ambassadors, which means that we represent him here on earth. And so if we want the people around us, the people that we love, our friends and our neighbors and our family members, our coworkers, whoever it might be, to trust that God keeps his word, then those of us who claim to follow him need to keep our word. And so that's my encouragement and my challenge to you today. It's good to see you guys again. I look forward to seeing some of you in person again soon. We're going to be meeting uh, outdoors, social distance, but um, it's going to be fantastic. Look forward to seeing you guys Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.